Hey guys, welcome back to a new video which is about Work Manager. And we use Work Manager to schedule and run tasks that need to happen in the background even if the app is not active. And these tasks can be syncing data, downloading files, uploading files. So these things need to happen in the background especially if they take a lot of time. So let's say the user clicks on a button to upload a file that is, I don't know, one gigabyte to a server. But then the user quits the app. It, this doesn't mean that the upload process should stop. It should be continued. So we use a work manager for that. And also use a work manager for those periodic tasks that need to happen once and then, like syncing data. So syncing it every one hour, for example. This work manager comes from the Android Jetpack library. And the difference between a work manager and a foreground service is that a foreground service task that happens in the background, just like a work manager task, a foreground service task needs a notification. The user needs to be aware about that task and it is like playing music. So when you have a music player, you have a notification. The user can go to the next song, can pause it. So this task requires a notification, which is that music notification that we always have in our music player's apps. But with a work manager task, the user should not be aware or does not have to be aware about that task. Like syncing data, the user shouldn't know if we are syncing data every hour, for example. The user doesn't care and the user shouldn't stop this anyway. The data has to be synced. But for a music player, the user can stop playing music if they want to. So a foreground service task actually can be stopped by the user, unlike the work manager task that shouldn't be stopped or doesn't have to be stopped by the user. So these are the two use cases for a work manager and for a foreground service. Now we'll be actually seeing work manager in which we'll create an example which is syncing data every one hour using a work manager and also with Dog or Health. So we'll see how to inject dependencies to our work manager. And let's get started. All right, here I'm in Android Studio and I have already prepared some stuff. Let's first see what libraries or dependencies we need. We need Dagger Hill dependencies normally, and then we need this lips. Okay, this is it actually. So right now I'm using a version catalog, but if you don't, this is the library that you need, which is the work runtime Kotlin version that also uses coroutines. And then we have the health work library which is what we use to actually inject dependencies to our work manager along with this one. So you need these three libraries and then the Dagger Health libraries as well. So you also need these two plugins in here and then that's the same here. Also, let's just go to our lips.version or versions. Here we have the health, Dagger Health plugin, Dagger Health libraries. We have the work manager stuff, as you can see some versions of them. So I will actually leave this code in the description. You can get these libraries from there if you want to. And I have prepared some classes. The first thing I have here is a repository and it is just simulating syncing data to an API. So we call it, we assume we need application, even though we don't use it, we delay for three seconds, which is like we are now uploading the data or syncing it. And then after all, we print that the data is synced. This is all that we have in our repository we have an application class, which is just a health and with app, nothing is special. It's actually, uh, we already have it here in our manifest. I wanted to register it. And then here I have a module in which I just provide my repository. So it's really simple, nothing is special. It returns my data sync repository and I pass application to it. And my activity in which I have nothing. Now, let's actually start building the work manager. At the end, the work manager is just a class. So let's create a new class here. Let's call it data sync worker, since we want to use it to, to sync data. We want to annotate this one with health worker, and then this extends worker like this. We need some parameters to be passed to this worker right here what do we need we need context and some worker parameters so context of type context and then worker parameters we need to pass them here to the parents so we just create some space down here we pass context and then worker parameters all right now we have a, a function to actually implement which is the do work function in which we will be doing the work simply now this worker is just a normal work manager. So if we want to, for example, use a suspend function like delay, we won't be able to do so because we don't have a coroutine scope. So for that, we'll have to use another one, which is a coroutine worker, which is the same, but now we get a suspend function in which we can use suspend functions. 
So that's now the advantage of using this coroutine worker. Here we need to return a result. And this result have three different things, which are so result, dot success, failure, and retry. Success when we successfully sync our data, failure when we fail to do that, and then retry if we want to actually restore after three sec I mean 15 seconds or one hour or whatsoever, we use this one. So let's do that later. Now what I want to do is actually inject in that repository to my work manager. So right here, I'm going to write assisted inject constructor like this, and then my repository. So it's a private var data sync repository, which is this one. And now since I'm using logger hills, I have to annotate these two dependencies with assisted like this and also this one. But the other dependencies that I inject or the classes that I create by myself that I inject in here, I don't have to annotate them with assisted. Only these two, which are the context and the work parameters that I pass to my coroutine worker at the end. All right. Now, what I'm going to return here, so let's say return try if we have any exception. So catch, let's catch a normal exception, for example. We don't, of course, have to return a try catch. We can just say our data sync repository dot sync data and then return a result dot success or failure or retry now uh, why am i doing that so let's just assume we can actually get an exception an exception i'm sorry so return try catch e of type exception now what i'm going to do is take this put it right there and then let me just delete this in this case i'm going to return or do I don't have to write return result dot success right here result dot failure so I return such a result in which I know whether I have a success or a failure in case something goes wrong right here so for example if I have an exception like throw I don't know exception so eventually I will get this failure because my function throws an exception but I won't do that now we successfully injected this repository with this dependency to my work manager but i still have to set up some stuff and what that is is a health factory that will happen in my app class so just create some space down here and to be able to inject to my repository with dagger health i need to extend configuration.provider this one now i have to override an instance or a field it shouldn't be in the constructor here let me just take it from here and then put it right here. I also need to inject another thing, which is a late init var health work factory, this one, and then I will make this one as well an override late init var actually. So I can delete this var, and then I need the onCreate function to initialize it. So right here, because this one will be injected by Dagger health, but this one I need to initialize it by myself. That will be work manager configuration is going to be configuration dot builder dot set work factory pass in my work factory this health work factory that I have in here dot build. Maybe this one should be called only work factory, not health work factory. And that's it. Now I have everything I need in my application. There is one thing I have to add in manifest because Otherwise, I'll get an exception. So let's just go to manifest and then paste these or this provider right here. So here it is. We need this one in manifest to be able to inject. This is what's there in the Android documentation, which means it's required. All right. I suppose now I should be able to inject very simply with no issues. Now that my work manager is well set up, so let's check it out data sync worker as you can see i did inject this data sync repository to it and the work will happen inside this do work function in a return a result which is either a success or a failure based on my uh, function now i need to make a work request and we have two types of requests which are a one-time request so a one-time task that will happen and finish and that's it except if we want to retry every 50 seconds in case we fail or we have a periodic work request, which is a request that will happen every 13 minutes or one hour. So it happens frequently. Now let's start with the first one, which is a one-time request. And let's actually do that in a separate function. We just delete this. 
so let's call it private fun in it work manager or something like so or just worker and now i need to create my request val work request is going to be in this case a one time work request builder and then i need to pass my data sync worker right here so let me just bring this to a new line and now i need to define some configurations like if i just want to build directly then i can do that but i have some stuff that i can do as well so for example i can set a back off criteria right here and then i can pass back off policy that can be back of policy dot linear or dot exponential let's go for linear and then we'll see both of them and then duration that can be duration dot of seconds and then let's say 15 seconds and uh, this requires stk 26 or above so you need to either check for the stk version if you want to just annotate the activity with that so it depends on what you want you can make a check before you call uh, this exact function or so anyway what this is is that in case we returned a retry from my worker what is that so right here i returned a retry so i want to retry if i fail what will happen is that i will retry every 15 seconds so i'll do my work i fail after 15 seconds i will try again i fail again after 15 seconds i will try again and so on until i successfully do the work and then that's it okay if i have here exponential this means i will do the work i will fail after 15 seconds i will try if i fail again i won't try after 15 seconds i will try after 30 seconds so i will double the time if i fail again i will try after one minute so i will double the time if i fail again after maybe two minutes so uh, every time i just double the time we can go for both of these if we want to so let's just try this one and then we want to unqueue our request with that we need a work manager dot get instance passing the context and then dot in queue passing my work request and of course i can unqueue more than one request but that's again in the complex side as you can see here this one takes requests and yeah anyway now our request is set up with our data sync worker with this set back of criteria we do have some other stuff like set initial delay like if you want to delay our request for 10 seconds before it starts but 10 seconds like this let's just take this and that put it right here so let's say we want to start after 10 seconds we can do this if we want to initially delay our request if we want to do that i think the minimum retry time we can have in here is 15 seconds but now let's just call our init worker and now of course in our repository we do print something so let's just run the app if we have any exceptions or anything we'll fix that if not then we will be able to sync the data and let's keep a lock on the lock cat right here all right the app didn't crash and data is synced with a success now let's try throw in an exception not this but throw exception so to see if we actually retry after every what 15 seconds so now we won't actually return a success but instead a, a failure or a retry to retry all right let's wait okay so as you can see we we'll return a retry let's wait for 15 seconds and after 15 seconds we retry again which is exactly what we want so our back off policy is working just great now we can delete this exception that we throw right here and let's see the second actually before seeing the uh, periodic uh, work request let's see something else we can actually pass in here which is some constraints that we can define before actually making our request so var constraints constraints dot builder dot set for example required network type that can be network type dot connected so right here we can pass dot set constraints passing my constraints so that means i have some constraints for example i must have internet connection i must be connected or it's not required or something like so so for example if this is a data sync then let me just see what error i have in here because i do have to build dot build this says i must have internet connection 
I must be connected to actually do this request. Otherwise, I won't. And I have more stuff like set charging. So for example, true, I must be charging my device to do this request. Or false if I don't want to. I do have set requires battery not low. See, that's true. So I shouldn't have a low battery percentage in my device. So I sh it should be like 60% and above, I don't know. And also with storage, set storage not low, true. So let's bring back that set battery or require battery not low to true. So these are some constraints, depends on my request. For example, here, I want to sync data to an API, then it makes sense that I must have an internet connection. If I want to write some files, some images, or download something to my storage, then technically I must have storage. And so on, if I have a task that requires battery or so, I must have battery on my device. So these are some constraints that depend on the type of thing I want to do. So this is a one-time request. Just copy this for the other request, but let's put it up here. And then this one is going to be a periodic work request builder and let's just delete this of course we have some stuff to define for this one and let's just copy this periodic and then init periodic worker and let's call that and then let's name this one init one time worker all right what do we need in here since this one is periodic so it needs to happen uh, frequently i need to tell it when it should happen like every one hour every 30 minutes and so Maybe it should be every one hour, less than that it wouldn't work, I'm not sure. Usually I just go for one hour, so one and then time unit go for hours. I can go for days, I can go for minutes, for seconds, but I don't think it will work for seconds and minutes. Maybe you need to go for hours, you can technically go for days if you want to do this once a day. It depends on exactly what you are trying to do. I'm going to go for every one hour, just like this, as you can see. I'm going to go for every one hour so every hour I will try this and here I can still have my constraints and everything is just the same but I need to actually enqueue my request in a different way which means I have to call the enqueue the unique periodic work like this I need to pass my work request but before that I also need to pass an existing periodic work policy dot keep and then a name for my worker let's just say data sync worker or something like so this one is the name of my worker that makes this worker unique this is the worker and this one this existing periodic policy or work policy let's actually see them and we have replace which actually possibly does the same as update which means just update the old request or the old yeah work request with the new one and cancel and re enqueue that means remove the old work request and then replace it with the new one. So keep, as I said, just means do nothing if we already have one. All right, I just actually go for keep because I don't usually have multiple requests conflicting or something like so. Now we see how to create a periodic work request. Now let's just call that and then let's run the app and see if we actually do sync the data or not. Let's wait, data is synced. And then after one hour, it will actually be resynced again. And I promise it will be, because I already works with Work Manager previously, and it will be resynced after one hour. And uh, yeah, if we fail, then we'll retry after 15 seconds and so on. This is for one time worker. Now we understand how a Work Manager works. So it's just for tasks that need to happen one time and then they will be finished. And like a foreground service in which we have a task that needs to be stopped by the user and requires the awareness of the user. In this case, we don't really care about the user. We don't care if they know we are syncing the data or not. They shouldn't know anyway. But we technically, so if we go to our work right here, we technically can create a notification here and then show a notification telling them the data is syncing. We can do that. It's not that we can't, but we don't have to. That's the thing. In a foreground service, we have to. So this is it for this video. See you and bye.